Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Yang saya hormati para pembicara, saya ucapkan selamat datang kepada seluruh peserta ekors yang ketiga CNE 2021. Yang ketiga ekors akan dibagi dengan beberapa sesi. Sesi pertama fungsional neuroanatomi dengan topik pertama Understanding Embryology of Cerebral Vascular System yang akan dipresentasikan oleh Dr. Doris G. Yohanan, Asisten Profesor of Anatomy dari India. Topik kedua, Fungsional Neurovascular Anatomy of Spinal yang akan dipresentasikan oleh Dr. Fiskasari P. Kalanjati, MKES PA Konsultan PhD dari Fakultas Kedokteran Universitas Erlangga, Surabaya. Baik, terima kasih Dr. Firdaus. Uh, baik, setelah selesai mengerjakan pretest, marilah kita beralih ke sesi pertama dari e-course kali ini, yaitu fungsional anatomi dengan topik pertama, Understanding Embryology of Cerebral Vascular System, yang akan dipresentasikan oleh Dr. Doris J. Yohanan. Uh, sebelum berpresentasi, saya akan membacakan CV beliau uh, kepada mohon izin untuk membacakan CV beliau, uh, Dr. Doris George Yohanan, uh, beliau saat ini asisten profesor of anatomy di Trivandrum Medical College dari 2017 hingga saat ini. Sebelumnya beliau menjadi asisten profesor anatomy di Sri Gokula Medical College tahun 2015 hingga 2017. Kemudian para residen menyelesaikan residen di Trivandrum Medical College. Next. Kemudian beliau banyak sekali uh, prize and awards, received travel grant award, international travel support by the Science of Engineering Research Board, Government of India, pada 19 annual course neurology and functional neurotomy, University College London, UCL, United Kingdom tahun 2019. Ya, baik. Kemudian Dr. Beliau... Dedi, uh, jadi mungkin <coughs> uh, saya sedikit cerita aja bahwa ya. Saya kenal Dr. Doris ini pada saat ini ada acara 19 annual course neurodiology and functional neuroanatomy di UCL. Oh. Jadi kita selama seminggu bersama-sama di sana, kemudian kita masuk ke laboratorium anatomi dan kita saling berdiskusi. Karena itu kemudian kita mengundang Dr. Doris ke sini. Ya, baik. Mungkin eh, bisa dimulai. Oh, namanya namanya oh, lecturenya. Okay. Ya, yeah. now let me present to you. Uh, Dr. Doris, please, the time and platform are yours, Dr. Doris. Hello all, good morning. Uh, I'm Dr. Doris. I'm Assistant Professor of Anatomy at the Government Medical College Thiruvandaram in Kerala in India. Uh, at the outset, let me thank the organizers of the CME uh, who have kindly invited me uh, to this continuing neurological education program at Surabaya. My job here is to give you a basic outline about the cerebral vascular system uh, development. Okay. Uh, I hope this will give you uh, some insight uh, when you uh, come across variants uh, in your clinical practice during your interventional radiology or interventional neurology. So let us go into the topic. I have designed my topic in this outline. First, I'll be dealing with the basics of brain development. Then I'll go to the topic called intracranial vasculogenesis, which is a, which is a little bit lengthy. Uh, so this will be the first segment of my presentation. And then I'll quickly rush through the different variants that you might encounter in your practice. And this includes fenestrations and duplications then circle of villus anomalies, then I'll go through the normal arterial variants, uh, the ones that you can also see in the skull base, and I'll also go through an interesting series called uh, carotid basilar anastomosis, which has four types, trigeminal, ortic, hypoglossal, and pro-Atlantic. Okay, we'll go through these in that chronological order. So first, I'll go to the brain development part. Brain develops from the neural tube. If you look at this neural tube, this is the cranial part and this is the caudal part. The caudal part retains its tubular structure and that is called the spinal cord. The cranial part develops a series of bubbles, bulges, 
and they are called the cranial vesicles or the brain vesicles or the three part brain okay this is found typically in the late uh, third to the fourth week okay late third to the fourth week so the first one is called the prosencephalon which is called forebrain next is called the mesencephalon also called midbrain and the third is called the hindbrain which is called a rhombencephalon okay so this is prosencephalon mesencephalon and this is called rhombencephalon the prosencephalon further divides you can see that in the third month it develops into a five part brain the prosencephalon further develops into a telencephalon and a diencephalon so initially you have prosencephalon bubbles it develops into two telencephalic vesicles and a diencephalon in between it diencephalon will be sandwiched by the two telencephalic vesicles the telencephalon is developing into cerebral hemispheres and diencephalon will be sandwiched you can see that the telencephalon is overgrowing the diencephalon you cannot see the diencephalon when you see from look from the outside telencephalon becomes so massive and you can see that in the brain when you see brain uh, anatomy specimen you can see that the the, uh, the telencephalon has overgrown into the whole cerebrum okay and the mesencephalon uh, remains like that there is no further subdivision the hind brain develops into a cranial metencephalon and a caudal myelencephalon the cranial metencephalon will form the pons anteriorly and the cerebellum posteriorly okay but both of them are derivatives of the metencephalon metencephalon is the cranial part of the rhombencephalon uh, and myelencephalon is the caudal part of the rhombencephalon i know that many of you may get confused with the encephalon part but uh, i hope you got the rough idea of how the adult brain is uh, architecture is arranged okay with that understanding we'll go to the intravascular intracranial vasculogenesis okay so this is the dorsal aorta this is the ventral aorta the ventral aorta will be connected to the dorsal aorta by a series of arterial arches and they are called rt rt arches or arch arteries arch arteries because they will be Uh, traversing through pharyngeal arches okay so you will have a ventral aorta here you will have dorsal aorta here they will be connected by arterial arches this is the first arch okay first arch will be regressing this is a second arch that will also be regressing third arch will is going to remain and this is the dorsal aorta you can see the dorsal aorta here the dorsal aorta is giving off a cranial extension that cranial extension is the one that is going to supply the brain before before this one month the brain was supplied by simple diffusion but as the brain is getting increased in its volume in its biomass the neuronal volume is going on increasing uh, the brain needs a dedicated blood supply that's when the branch from the dorsal aorta will uh, shoot up to uh, uh, dedicated for the supply of the of that brain tissue so it is basically an extension of the dorsal aorta so if someone asks you what is the uh, internal carotid artery developing from it is developing from the third arterial arch in the proximal part and in the distal part it is an extension of the dorsal aorta okay you can look at this uh, uh, this part too this is the fourth arch fourth arch artery is going to develop into the aortic arch i mean the arch of the aorta so this is the arch of the aorta continuing as the dorsal aorta and actually this much part is going to be regressed okay so that is that is the basic idea of development you should understand that the internal carotid is the primary artery it is going to be the primary artery that is going to supply the brain i go, go into more details of that so you can see that that internal carotid artery is the one that you are seeing here this is the ventral aorta this is the dorsal aorta i, I mentioned that already dorsal aorta is extending as the internal aorta shooting up to supply the brain okay and uh, you can see that this is the from the ventral aorta you can see the third aortic arch a3 arterial arch uh, the arch artery 3 so the arch artery 3 this is going to be internal carotid artery so that that is the internal carotid artery and you you have it will be good if you look at a very interesting a very peculiar another longitudinal vessel okay this is another longitudinal vessel and this is called longitudinal neural artery and i want you to look at the brain at this point this is undoubtedly the prosencephalon or the forebrain this is the mesencephalon mesencephalon characteristically has a bend okay mesencephalon has a bend you call it the mesencephalic flexure okay that is a mesencephalic bend and this is the rhombencephalon so the longitudinal neural artery is located ventral to the rhombencephalon okay 
the rhombencephalon ventral bone. Rhombencephalon is the hindbrain, and you know that rhombencephalon develops into pons uh, anteriorly, uh, cerebellum posteriorly, and the medulla uh, caudally. So, ventral to those, you have the longitudinal neural artery. Why I said all this is because uh, being uh, very familiar with the adult anatomy, you can obviously understand that longitudinal neural artery is going to be the precursor of the vertebro basilar system or the posterior circulation. But one interesting point here is that here you don't have the vertebral artery. There is no vertebral artery now. You only have the internal carotid artery. So the internal carotid artery, as I mentioned in the previous slide, internal carotid artery is primarily supplying the brain. That's why I stated that statement initially. So the internal carotid artery is going to supply through the longitudinal neural system, okay, through these series of vessels. Okay, let us have a look at that. Okay, I'm going to uh, let me just uh, erase these off for more clarity. Okay, PM, okay. and so uh, you can see. Can you see this vessel? Can you see this vessel? This vessel is the trigeminal artery. Okay, and this is the aortic vesicle. Aortic vesicle is nothing. It is an internal layer of apparatus. Uh, it is in the adult. It is the uh, it, it develops into the aortic capsule, which further develops into the inner ear. So everything is located within the petrous bone. So around that you have a series of small vessels, and that is called the aortic vessels. Uh, and here you have the hypoglossal vessel, and here you have the first cervical intersegmental artery, first cervical intersegmental artery, which is called the pro-Atlantic artery. So why are these arteries, what is the importance of all these arteries? These arteries, they are actually channels that is uh, communicating the longitudinal neural system that I mentioned already with the carotid system. So the carotid system is going to perfuse the hindbrain through these series of vessels. Which are the series of vessels? Trigeminal, aortic, hypoglossal, and the pro-Atlantic arteries. And you can see the further on further development you can see that this longitudinal neural system is now gaining access the blood supply is uh, being now perfused by the vertebral artery so vertebral artery comes only later in the embryology vertebral artery you know it is developing from the subclavian this is subclavian artery so subclavian artery you have a lot of intersegmental arteries intersegmental arteries will have a series of longitudinal anastomosis and those all those are longitudinal anastomosis uh, gets connected and the main trunks gets deleted off and that forms the vertebral artery and the vertebral artery gets connected to the longitudinal neural system uh, even uh, you know that this is i mentioned that this is the first cervical intersegmental so first cervical intersegmental distal part remains as the horizontal suboccipital part of the vertebral artery uh, that is a v3 segment of the vertebral artery and that continues as the vertebral artery and the into the basilar artery so that is when the uh, longitudinal nervous system gets this blood supply from the vertebral artery. Till then, it is by the carotids. Now, let us look at these vessels. This is the third arch. I mentioned that already, third arch continuing as the internal carotid. Uh, this is the, uh, in, uh, the arch of the aorta. This is the subclavian, the seventh intersegmental, cervical intersegmental, and this is the longitudinal anastomosis between all the intersegmental arteries that is going to form the vertebral artery. Now, let us look at some interesting points over here. Uh, this is the longitudinal neural artery that I mentioned earlier. This is the internal carotid connected by trigeminal, hypoglossal, and pro-Atlantic, already mentioned. Internal carotid divides into a cranial ramus and a caudal ramus. Caudal ramus is what I have written here. Cranial ramus is called the olfactory artery. Olfactory artery. Olfactory artery is the precursor of the ACA. Actually, olfactory artery further divides into medial olfactory artery. Medial olfactory artery is the precursor of the ACA. And ACA is the first artery, first artery, the most primitive artery to be developed in the uh, T-lens lens of law. Okay. So, ACA. All the other arteries, including the MCA, PCA, are all latecomers. Okay. Uh, along with this uh, ACA, you have another artery from the uh, cranial ramus that is called the anterior coronal. So the A's, uh, the uh, olfactory artery and the anterior coronal are, are going to balance the blood supply uh, towards the telencephalon at the initial point. Okay. The caudal ramus is actually the precursor of the PCOM. PCOM. Let us look at further uh, what are the fates of these. Okay. The, uh, the medial olfactory is going to develop into ACA. 
the lateral olfactory. This is the lateral olfactory. Lateral olfactory is going to develop into the MCA and all the perforators of the MCA and the ACA. That means the Hubner, the lateral striate uh, and MCA all are actually developing from the lateral olfactory. Okay. I mentioned that this is the olfactory artery. Olfactory artery develops into medial and lateral. Olfactory artery develops into medial and lateral. The medial one is the ACA. The lateral one develops into the Hubner, the lateral perforators and the MCA. MCA is actually gaining cortical, cortical territory. If you look at uh, the uh, evolutionary perspective and the embryology perspective, MCA is actually a very late comer. MCA is actually one of the late perforators of the ACA that got a cortical supply. Okay. So, uh, that, is, that is much more lateral. That's why MCA is uh, located more lateral because it is a develop, it is developed from the lateral olfactory branch. So this is the anterior choroidal. Anterior choroidal is substantial because choroidal tissue is, uh, uh, so is giving a substantial uh, biomass for the developing brain. And this is the, uh, the PCOM. I told you that, that that is developing into the PCOM. From where uh, you can see the posterior choroidal artery. This is the posterior choroidal artery. And this is the midbrain. Okay, this is the midbrain. So this is the tectal artery. The tectal artery is going to develop into the, the true posterior cerebral arteries. Posterior cerebral artery is developing from the tectal artery. You may wonder how can a midbrain artery be developing into posterior cerebral artery. You understand that telencephalon is going to be so massive. It is going to be so massive. So the tectum, tectal artery is going to uh, annex and uh, gain the supply of the posterior cerebral artery. So all of these are important. So actually the PCOM, the basal tip of the basal arm and the tectal artery and even the superior cerebellar artery okay that much are actually developing from that much are actually developing from the carotid system and this much lower part is actually developing from the, uh, the vertebral system okay Develop, development wise but in adult pattern you know you already know that uh, the posterior circulation goes and supplies still the basal arm the posterior cerebral, the posterior choroidal, everything is supplied by the basal. Why, why this occurs? Till here, the blood supply is going in this direction. Okay. Till here, the blood supply is going in this direction. We call it craniofugal. But as the vertebral artery gains access, the blood supply is going backwards. Okay. The blood supply going backwards in the basal. You know that vertebral joints to uh, supply the basal. That is actually a late developmental event in uh, evolutionary always also and in develop in uh, embryology also you know that ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny okay. now if you look at the uh, at a ventral view of the brain you can see that this is the olfactory branch uh, this is the medial olfactory branch medial olfactory branch is going to develop into the ACA and you can see a development of a plexus here you have actually a plexus okay. and uh, the lateral ones is the MCA Okay, this is actually the lateral olfactory. So you will have the striate branches. All of these are developing from the lateral olfactory. These are the longitudinal neural arteries that you find on the ventral aspect of the hind brain. And these longitudinal neural arteries are going to fuse together. Okay, they are going to fuse together and that is going to form the basal artery cranially and the vertebral artery caudally. You can see that the unfused part will form the vertebral artery and the fused part will form basal artery. Uh, deficits in this fusion will eventually cause fenestrations or duplications can be seen. Now, this is a pictorial summary. You can see that this is the internal carotid developing into uh, the, uh, uh, this is the cranial ramus and this is the caudal ramus. Caudal ramus is becoming the PCOM. Okay. So, this is really the P1, uh, sec this will be the P1 segment and this is the posterior choroidal. This will be the PCA. See, the PCA is uh, eventually the tectal branch is uh, becoming the PCA. And you can see the MCA also developing. So the PCA and MCA are late comers. Why they are developing late? They are developing late because only after the vertebral artery gains access into the longitudinal neural system, uh, the uh, longitudinal neural system is relieved from the carotid system. That is called the vertebrobasilar relief. Okay, vertebrobasilar relief. Vertebrobasilar relief is the trigger for the development, enormous development of the MCA and the PCA territories. So you can see that the first branch that is developing in the ACA, that's, that's why I said ACA is the most primitive vessel if you look at evolution or at embryology. Okay. So this is, uh, this is the PCA and this is the superior cerebellar artery. Till the superior cerebellar artery, that developmentally it is arising from the 
anterior or the carotid system okay carotid system caudal ramus the caudal ramus that vessel is actually going to contribute into the formation of pca p1 and up to the superior cerebral uh, superior cerebellum okay technically speaking you remember that this is the trigeminal this is optic this is hypoglossal and this is uh, proatlantic the part proximal to the trigeminal is part em embryologically part of the carotid system but further after the uh, gain of the vertebral uh, uh, blood supply into this the blood supply when the blood supply turned backwards uh, it uh, all this has become the posterior circulation i hope you understood how the posterior circulation was gained by the vertebral uh, artery when the vertebral artery joined the longitudinal nervous system and actually the uh, posterior cerebral superior cerebellar p1 basilar tip everything was uh, you know conquered by the vertebral arterial system i hope that point is clear now we'll quickly go through the variants okay uh, the normal pattern in that plexus it is a very complicated plexus but this is the final normal pattern and all the other ones have been regressed so it is very simple to understand that this is a1 segment this is a2 segment and this is the a com and this is the ica dividing into the mca and the ac okay so this is actually the normal normal pattern and this is actually a single variant of the normal theme okay so let us look at what are the other possibilities there are a lot of possibilities one is called the duplication and the fenestration of the ac and acom you can see a duplication of uh, the aca you can see another duplication of the ac acom here acom duplication is defined as two individual channels that are connecting the two acas you can also see another uh, peculiar entity called fenestration fenestration you have a single limb connecting to one aca and it has a y formation and that y limbs will be connected to the next aca this is called a fenestration so fenestration uh, is uh, can predispose to uh, more aneurysm formation if you look at this with this plexus formation all this are basically uh, different permutations or combinations of this basic theme uh, if you look at this this is basically the fenestration is looking like this right like this this will be the this will be the y okay and this will be the uh, aca okay so that is a, a pattern of a fenestration a duplication will be uh, something like this okay uh, two acoms so all this is uh, possibly you can you can have to just draw through this maze to get different patterns for these variations fenestration of basilar and vertebral is also common uh, many studies say that posterior circulation fenestrations are uh, more common around it is 5 to 7 percentage uh, now uh, fenestration of basilar and vertebral it, uh, it can occur due to deficits in the fusion i told that it fuses like a zip so if that zip fusion is not possible you know that when you uh, open and close zips you can have def defects so just like that you can have an open bubble and that's that's exactly what you see here the basilar uh, uh, fenestration can be seen here a vertebral artery fenestration can be also be seen here so they are all uh, possibilities when uh, the longitudinal neural systems are not fusing in the ventral aspect of the hindbrain now circle of willis variants are also common and the most common one that uh, everyone knows is the fetal pcom or the fetal pca and uh, this again it is called fetal because uh, you already know that i i mentioned that in my uh, in that earlier picture that actually the the tectal artery if i if i clear this off this is the tectal artery tectal artery is actually developing from the carotid this is the reason why it is called fetal uh, pcom or the fetal pca tectal artery is going to develop into the pca so the pca was embryologically part of the carotid system and if the pcom was sufficiently large then the carotid is going to supply the pca so that is why it is called a fetal pca or fetal pcom okay so uh, it is found very commonly it is uh, around 2 and 20 to 30 percent is the incident rate of it and uh, the reason is said to be that, that developmentally it is uh, we have not yet completely evolved to uh, hold the uh, PCA into the posterior. So that may be the reason. The uh, angiographic definition is that the PCOM, the PCOM caliber should be greater than the P1 segment caliber. Okay. So why that that has occurred? This has this side, the vertebral artery circulation has not completely conquered the PCA circulation from the uh, carotid circulation. That's why it is called a fetal PCA. Now uh, you also have unpaired ACA. 
okay unpaid, I'm, I'm sorry unpaired ac also called as goes ac what is that again from this pattern you can see uh, uh, in the midline you have something called the uh, artery to the corpus callosum median artery to the corpus callosum i didn't mention that in the midline uh, in, in spite of these two arteries you have a median artery to the corpus callosum and uh, if that artery alone is persisting uh, with uh, regression of these two arteries it is called an unpaired azygos ac there are speculations that this is the future of human evolution uh, that you will have in in future generations of homo sapiens will evolve to have a single azygos one of the postulates okay it's not completely proven uh, and another one is that uh, you can have a bihemispheric ac it's almost similar it's the only difference is that you have acs on both sides but one side it is very much hypoplastic and the uh, larger one is going to give off one more branch which is going to supply both hemispheres the clinical standpoint the both of these are significant because a single aca is going to supply okay even this aca or this aca is going to supply both the aca territories of the medial part of the cerebrum another one is the median artery of the corpus callosum uh, persistence also called the triplicated aca or the uh, 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 triple aca or the accessory aca in which the, all the three vessels are present the median artery to the corpus callosum and both the acs are present okay the incidence is said to be very high in neonatal autopsies and 22% in adult autopsies so probably this vessel has not been uh, sufficiently um, regressed in these variants you also have something called duplicated and accessory mca these are only uh, you know uh, terminological def uh, definition wise differences uh, let us look at what these two things are if you look at this basic theme uh, from the in, uh, the internal carotid termination you know that uh, usually the internal carotid terminates into mca and aca right so from in here internal carotid is giving off mca and aca but one more mca branch is being given okay and that is called two vessels are originating from the distal end of aca that is called a duplication of mca so this is the characteristic duplication okay and uh, uh, this side you can see that the internal carotid dif dividing into mca and aca and from this aca you can see another branch is given off and that is called an accessory mca now this definition is being given by t letter this is a working definition so there are other definitions also if you look literature but anyway the importance is that uh, this may be supplying the anterior for example this artery the accessory uh, the accessory mca may be supplying the anterior frontal uh, aspect and then our frontal lobe the duplicated mca may be supplying the anterior temporal lobe so uh, that that is why these are all are important now normal arteries can be uh, variants can also be seen in the skull base prime importance you have a very rare art, art, uh, incident, uh, uh, there is a very rare incidence of something called a hypoplasia or agenesis of ica but if you find something like this an agenesis of aca it will be good if you take a, a bone window ct in which you can see the carotid canal uh, very clearly on one side but uh, if you compare with the opposite side the carotid canal is very very narrow if you see this it is a proof that it is not an atherosclerotic plaque that is occluding it's not an acquired lesion but this is a congenital lesion why this is important because only after the development of an artery around that artery only a bone can develop okay the arterial tree around the arterial tree you have the connective tissue only within the connective tissue the bone will be developing so uh, the, that understanding that embryological insight will give you the idea that you need to take a bone window so around the artery you will have the bone formation so if the artery is small the bone will also be small the canal will also be small you also have apparent ICS where the artery is seen now uh, juxtaposing the middle ear cavity uh, you can also have lateral pharyngeal ICA in which the ICA can be seen uh, uh, very uh, on the posterior wall of the pharynx this is also very important because uh, here the ICS on this side and on this side can be very close together and on, if it is bilateral it is called kissing carotids and this is very important because uh, normal uh, pharyngeal procedures pharyngeoplasty or uh, uh, posterior pharyngeal procedures tonsillectomy everything uh, the carotids can be at risk in this case persistent fetal intracranial arteries you have i told you that you have trigeminal optic hypoglossal and proatlantal and these can persist these are the variant types called salesman types of a persistent trigeminal artery you can see that uh, this is the carotid from this carotid you can see the trigeminal artery persisting and uh, this is the distal part of the basilar 
Okay, so uh, this will be characteristic seen from the cavernous part of the IC. Uh, you also can have aortic artery, but aortic artery is now said to be non-existing because uh, earlier in the picture itself, I showed you they are very slender branches. So if it is present, it should course through the internal acoustic meatus. I told you that aortic capsule is present within the petrus. So uh, if by definition, it should go through the internal acoustic meatus. A primitive hypoglossal should course through the hypoglossal canal. So this is a 3D rotational angiography uh, uh, in which you can see uh, the hypoglossal canal in which you can see the large hypoglossal artery traversing through it. Uh, this is uh, again the volume rendered image uh, in which you can see the internal carotid, you can see the basilar here which is connected by the hypoglossal artery. Hypoglossal artery is connecting the cervical aspect, cervical part uh, of the internal carotid to the basilar artery. Again, here you can have the regression of the vertebral artery. This is the persistent primitive proatlantar artery. Pro persistent primitive proatlantar artery. Uh, this is this is actually a hypoglossal. On this hypoglossal, they are showing how a persistent primitive proatlantar can occur. Okay, this is characteristically located in the junk in the space between the occiput and the atlas. Okay, uh, because that is the first cervical intersegmental artery. So. Uh, that will be the location of this uh, uh, proatlantal artery because this is also the location where you have the horizontal segment of the vertebral artery. So that is the same location. So it will be connecting the, uh, uh, the internal carotid to the vertebral artery and it will be passing through the foramen magnum. So the passage through the foramen magnum is the most essential criterion for defining the proatlantal artery. So altogether summarizing, we have the we learned about the basics of the brain development. We learned about intracranial vascular genesis. We went through the variants, different variants of fenestrations, duplications, circular villus anomalies, normal arterial variants, and also the uh, carotid basilar anastomosis, mainly trigeminal, hypoglossal, and broad landed. We questioned the presence of optic artery. So thank you so much for inviting me into this talk, and I hope you have gained at least some insight from this presentation. Uh, this is my email id and uh, this is a youtube channel that i have uh, where i have a lot of uh, videos uh, related to uh, neurology neuro uh, neuroanatomy and i'll be uploading more and more content as time passes thank you uh, thank you dr doris uh, dr doris is already uh, with us hello dr doris Hi. Hello, Dr. Doris. Yes, uh, from the presentation, uh, we can uh, see some fact that uh, anterior choroidal artery and anterior cerebral artery is uh, the first artery that forms. We know that uh, uh, middle cerebral artery that uh, <clears throat> we see here with very large artery is actually is a perforator and a part yes, of the yes. uh, anterior cerebral than, than before. Yes, 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 ex yes. Okay, uh, Dr. Doris, how are you? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm sorry. Okay, th was thank a you. was connectivity issue initially, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I okay. heard your question, yeah, yeah. Okay, th thank you, uh, we're having you here. And uh, I think uh, the, the discussion is, uh, will be a start after the second speaker, Dr. Fiskasari. Yeah. We know that the anatomy is uh, always hard to us, to most of us. And, uh, and then why we put this session in the morning is so we can uh, have a fresh brain. So <laughs> we can take uh, and memorize all the lecture in the morning. And uh, you can take a coffee from your uh, table, I think, uh, for a while before uh, we come to discussion. So we have uh, Dr. Doris here and Dr. <coughs> Fiskasari. Uh, okay. Hi, Dr. Doris. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Eh? In India, it's still uh, one and a half hour earlier than Indonesia. Okay. I think uh, we cannot uh, very clear your voice. We cannot hear very clear your voice. My voice? My voice is oh, that, that's okay. Now that's okay. Okay, uh, and then uh, after take some coffee, I think <laughs> uh, we can start the discussion.
uh, we have uh, 70 par participants here. Uh, probably uh, there is a question from the audience. We have 15 minute uh, time for discussion. Okay, one question uh, to Dr. Doris. Dr. Doris, uh, yes. how often you uh, find this uh, anatomical variation in uh, anatomical specimen in your center? Uh, in the anatomist, uh, I've, I've not done a study. My, uh, personally, I've not done a study, but uh, the PCOM is becoming bigger is common. Uh, that's, that's obviously common because, uh, as, as you know, in angiography, how how much heat becomes you see well, just like that that's common uh the other other variants are accidental i've, I've not we, we see one we see uh, duplication of mca uh, we see that we, we don't actually have a, a study on how much is the incident in our institution yeah but it's quite incidental i think uh, radiologists also uh, uh come to the fact that uh, accept the fact that it's most of them are incidental finding. They may be actually doing an angiography for uh, some other, uh, uh, for example, a, a dual levy fistula or a cavernoma, but incidentally, they find a penetration or a duplication of a vessel in a different territory, uh, in spite of the territory that they were uh, looking for. So uh, I think it's fairly fairly common. We have not studied that uh, the, the extent of the variance as much. OK. Yes, thank you, Dr. Doris. And I think uh, all of the audience, uh, I think, can again uh, see the video of the Dr. Doris, I think, from his channel and further, I think. Uh, he had uh, Air Anatomy channel. And then I think for the embryology, we have to reply and again coming to embryology and then uh, forgetting and then coming again and forgetting again. That's uh, what uh, <clears throat> we uh, experience in uh, daily practice. We we always forgot a lot. Okay, thank you, Dr. Doris. And uh, probably there is a, okay, there is one one a question here in Indonesia. Hey, uh, untuk Dr. Fiska for the Dr. Fiska Sari. There is uh, one question from Dr. Suleiman. Dr. Suleiman asking uh, why uh, the posterior spinal cord have two artery and the anterior only have one. Uh, Terima kasih. Saya jawab dalam bahasa Indonesia, Pak. Ya, yeah, silakan. <laughs> Jadi memang <coughs> secara tadi sudah dijelaskan ya da, uh, oleh embriologinya mulai dari uh, vaskularisasi di encephalon atau di otak ya encephalon maksudnya bukan di encephalon ya jadi memang dari awalnya dia uh, berasal dari arteri vertebralis ya secara perkembangan embriologinya nanti dia akan uh, berkembang menjadi fusi ya fusi ke arah anterior ya menjadi satu di depan ya yaitu menjadi ASA Ya, arteri spinalis anterior. Kemudian yang yang di belakang itu memang dia berkembang menjadi dua. Nah kalau ditanya mengapa mungkin lebih lebih jelas mungkin kita bisa tanya dengan dokter Doris ya, dokter Firdaus ya. <laughs> Karena tadi sudah bagus banget dijelaskan mengenai okay. asal muasalnya yang okay. dari dorsal dan ventral aorta. Kemudian okay. dia nanti akan uh, anastomosis yang di bagian dorsal dengan uh, arteri longitudinalis. Uh, nerve tadi kita masih ingat ya gambarnya yeah. dokter Doris tadi yeah. Yeah. itu sudah yeah. jelas banget dari situ uh, bisa menjawab mengapa uh, muncul satu asa dua psa saya rasa demikian. Oke okay. okay. probably uh, dokter Doris can explain from the uh, embryological embryological point of view why anterior spinal is one and posterior is two. Basically you have uh, as, as it was mentioned there also um, uh, 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 Dr. Yes. Uh, shown in the presentation that there are metameric vessels. The metameric vessels are horizontal like this, and they undergo longitudinal anastomosis. Why exactly one in front and two posterior? We don't know the exact answer of why some occur, something occurs in the human body. So it, it is occurring like that. You have two longitudinal anastomosis uh, in the posterior aspect and one in front. 
that, that that is how it occurs <laughs> we don't we don't have exactly a why for that uh, and there are actually so many whys if you uh, i think uh, most of you are uh, interventional radiology you should actually uh, read two pages one from uh, from the web page called neurangio okay and neurangio is a, yeah, yeah. A, 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 the neurangio is a very famous website and that yeah, yeah. Uh, you have two uh, channel uh, two pages on uh, evolution and embryology in that itself uh, Dr. Lasjanius has said yes, why yes. exactly one thing occurs, why there is an ACOM yeah. between two ACAs. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. we don't know exactly why that, yeah, <laughs> why yeah. occurs. Some things happen like that. Yeah, yeah. That was a wonderful book. And uh, actually, uh, Dr. Purwoko, we have uh, one case last week, uh, duplication of anterior spinal artery. It, it sometimes uh, happens. Yes. There is uh, one another question to Dr. Doris. Uh, Dr. Doris, uh, yes, if yes, there, yes. yes, you can see, yes. you can see from the chest. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, okay. uh, uh, Dr. Doris, uh, if there's a uh, duplication of the artery, it, it make better or worse for brain circulation. Uh, it is it is said that some, the, the matter is that duplication, what you see in angiography, uh, uh, may be in fact the an intima and the media. Outside the uh, adventitia may be intact. So maybe the duplication that you see, uh, I mean, the fenestration that you see in a, in a, in a uh, angiography may not be complete when you see from in an anatomy specimen. So it may be only the intima and the media. So the point is that uh, such uh, duplications of fenestration, especially fenestrations, can cause a hemodynamic turbulence in that region. Uh, the blood channel that goes through that uh, area can be, uh, can undergo turbulence. And that eventually can go into a vicious cycle, creating an aneurysm. So uh, one thing that is said is fenestration. Typical example is a fenestration of ACOM has some more chance of incidence for aneurysms than a duplication of ACOM. So uh, duplication of ACOM is more hemodynamically stable. Uh, I showed you two ACAs like this. And between two ACAs, you have two channels of ACOM. That is more hemodynamically stable when you consider with a fenestration, a single uh, limb dividing into two channels. So that is more hemodynamically unstable. So uh, the answer for that question is fenestration can be uh, more, uh, it will make circulation worse. Worse means it, it has a more chance for a, uh, for an aneurysm, which in future uh, of that person, uh, as a person uh, in, uh, as age in advances, it is more uh, risky for the patient, for, uh, for the health of the patient. So yes. Okay, at the below, there is another question, Dr. Doris. Uh, Dr. Doris, if uh, there is a duplication of, of the artery, oh, it is I make better or worse for brain circulation? Yes. Uh, that, that's the same, I think. Uh, that's duplication of, I, I think that that's the same thing I answered. I, uh, but in many cases, fenestration is a, is a major issue. Uh, in duplication, if it is undergoing a, a hemodynamically unstable, uh, situation, uh, then it will cause a, uh, it is it has a risk for an aneurysm. But in many cases, as I said before, you may be investigating for something else in a different territory. For example, a cavernous internal carotid, and then you will be seeing a fenestration of a vertebral artery with no aneurysms in that region. Uh, so many of these are incidental findings. You you find it only incidentally. So we, we can't say that you see that you see a fenestration or duplication. There is an absolute risk. I think more more studies are needed on that, but uh, some fenestrations, yes. Okay, yes. Thank you, Dr. Doris, uh, and I think uh, thank you for the speaker. Very fantastic uh, this first session. So it is hard, but I think this is a very beneficial for us, the clinicians. And uh, I think uh, probably we can make uh, another offline meeting. I think, Dr. Doris if uh, pandemic is over so we can make uh, the hybrid meeting with dr fiskasari and come to uh, neuroanatomy department so we can see the specimen directly just like in london so i think yeah, it, yeah. Is, uh, it, it is fantastic yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. Uh, i think uh, we finished for the first session we thanks uh, to all the speaker for coming and explaining to us and for the first session we close and we go to the dr daddy for the second session. Thank you very much for thank your you. coming. Thank, thank, you. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Dr. much. Dr. Fiska and Dr. Doris, yes.